I recently returned from nearly a week's visit to Cuba. You know the history with the United States. It's a socialist society over there. A lot of the freedoms that we take for granted are non-existent in Cuba. And yet scores of Americans have been lined up to visit the Caribbean island after Barack Obama eased restrictions on our travel there. I went after President Trump announced that he was rolling back the Obama policies. Here's what I found. Havana, Cuba today looks a lot like it did in the late 1950s when Fidel Castro seized power from a dictator favored by the United States. You say this is Havana frozen in time? Havana frozen in time. What time? Uh, well, pretty much from 59 and back. Following the revolution, Castro's government seized private businesses for the state. Well-to-do Cubans fled to the U.S., their homes taken over by the state, then given to the masses. That made that were there their entire life, that after revolution, when their owners left the house, she took over. The government gave her the house. The government gave her that house. If their original owners came back, what is going to happen with her and her family? Today, many, if not most, of those expensive houses look like this, falling down or barely standing because the poor have no way of keeping them up. This is a kind of an old town, so you see a lot of old buildings that are falling apart, but even people still live inside. It's really hard to afford to restore these buildings. And several generations. Not Seven generations. You can find three different generations living together. Despite all the evidence to the contrary, you won't find many proud Cubans who consider their country third world. Education is free here, including college. Same for health care. It's free. But it's not enough, especially for the young Cubans. They want to run their own businesses, earn money that equals what others in a free society are making. Uh, we want changes in the economic side. We want to increase the private sector because there is more motivation to develop our society, to work harder, and it is a fact that the socialism in the economic side, it doesn't work. The Cuban government has allowed some private enterprise in the hospitality industry. The best restaurants we visited are owned by private citizens who are often able to pay their waiters more than average medical doctors can earn working for the state. But the changes, they're not coming fast enough for the young. Most of the people in Cuba, including Havana, don't have access to the internet. The government likes that way. Much like North Korea and China, the internet causes problems. People get too much information. They start having higher expectations. They make demands on the government. That's a problem. There are ways of getting the internet, and the young people can also show you how to get taped American broadcast programs. They call it the package. It's underground, it's illegal, and that's all they'll say about it. The collapse of the Soviet Union, which had been Cuba's big trade partner, the U.S. embargo, and the stifling of free enterprise continue to haunt this Caribbean country. But President Obama's opening the doors to American tourism had brought some optimism. Now the Cubans wait to see what will happen with President Trump reversing some of Obama's changes. President Trump's changes are designed to keep American tourism and dollars away from the Cuban government. Now, I don't see how this happens because the communist government there controls just about everything. And by the way, there is no finance system in Cuba. Everything is in cash. No credit cards. You don't finance the purchase of a house or car with credit. It's cash only. I'm looking forward to going back. It was that interesting. We're posting a lot of my pictures on our webpage.